Near sightedness or as we all call it myopia is a common vision condition in which you can see objects that are near to you clearly but objects that are farther away are very blurry. It occurs when the shape of your eye causes the light rays to bend that is refract incorrectly focusing images in front of your retina instead of on your retina. Now topical atropine has proven to be the most effective and promising treatment modality in myopia control for overall several decades. Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues Journal Club your daily dose of health and medical news. I am Dr Nandita Mohan and today I'm going to talk about how a new concept of low dose atropine has been found to be effective in treating myopia. Previous reviews and meta analyses have reported that among various treatment options available topical atropine shows a maximum reduction in myopia progression while a recent study in the scientific reports has evaluated the efficacy and safety of low dose atropine compared to placebo in the indian population and also studied the impact of various modifiable and non modifiable factors on myopia progression and the drug efficacy the study was a single centered prospective placebo controlled interventional study which included a total of 43 participants aged between 6 and 16 years with progressive myopia all the participants received 0.01% of atropine in the right eye which was the treatment eye and placebo in the left eye which was the control for a year the main outcome measures were annual myopia progression and the axial length elongation in treatment and the control eyes and their drug efficacy was also studied It was then found that myopia progression showed a 63.89% reduction with respective axial length elongation at 44.4% reduction. Reduction in both the parameters was statistically significant in all children irrespective of age group, baseline myopia progression, family history, screen time, near and outdoor time. The researchers concluded that 0.01% atropine was effective and safe in retarding the myopia progression and axial length elongation in the Indian eyes. Lifestyle and habits might also have a crucial role to play in it. We now have with us the lead author of this study, Dr. Shweta Chaurasia, who is an assistant professor at the Advanced Eye Center, PGI MER Chandigarh. So regarding your recent study that was published in the scientific reports journal on the efficacy of low dose atropine that is 0.01% on myopia progression and the axial length elongation what was the uh, rationale behind the study meaning what actually prompted you to carry out this research yeah see a uh, progressive myopia in growing children has become a major public health burden like worldwide and its control in the present scenario is the current uh, challenge as well as priority and as we know that lot of studies has been published on topical atropine which has emerged as a most effective and promising treatment modality in myopia control over several decades and previous uh, reviews and meta analysis have reported that among the various treatment options available like orthokeratology uh bifocal uh, contact lenses progressive glasses a multifocal multi uh, focal contact lenses topical atropine has shown the maximum reduction in myopia progression but different studies have shown that the low dose 0.01% atropine has the better treatment to side effect ratio as an effective in treatment modality but what is lacking in the literature is that uh, there is no uh, there is only one study which has actually uh studied the uh, efficacy of this lowest concentration of drug against a placebo so uh, and that study has actually taken two sets of population one uh, in which they have put the atropine in both the eyes and uh, one set of population which was placebo so there are a lot of confounding factors with the children like these children have different near up activities different outdoor activities different sunlight exposure they have different genetic components so all these confounding factors do affect the results so uh, what we did in our study is we uh, took the population uh, in which one eye was subjected to atropine and other eye was subjected to placebo so we actually uh, in a, in the same individual with the same confounding factors we studied the efficacy of the drug compared to the placebo 
moreover a lot of studies have been published in the west there was actually when the start the study was started there was no uh, literature available on indian population like we have dark pigmented iris so how this drug is effective in indian population we wanted to study the efficacy of this drug also in our study we also study the relationship of different modifiable and non modifiable factors which affect the myopia progression as well as the efficacy of the drug that was a brief introduction of the study ma'am and considering it's been done in the indian population and as we had previously discussed that there have been many such studies that have been carried out in populations outside of the country but considering this one which is targeting the indian uh, people or indian population per se and we all know that myopia is definitely becoming a global concern these days it is definitely mandatory that practitioners look into this on a very serious note Now if we talk about the study a little more what was the methodology that was adopted we actually uh, the clinical records of the myopic children over the past 1 year were screened and what we took the children we included in our study were like from the age 6 to 16 years and progressive myopes which were like progressing more more than 0.5 diopter in the preceding year that was very important in our like inclusion criteria because we wanted because if the myopia is not progressing there is no point in giving the drug then the only the myopics which were minus 1 to minus 7 diopters those were those were included and with the stable astigmatism as well as with no gross anisometropia so what we did we took uh, we uh, these all these myopic children were subjugated to cyclopegic refraction optical biometry which included axial length lens thickness anti chamber depth and keratometry the pupil size with the photopic pupil size were recorded and also the accommodation and vergence parameters like any amount of foria exophoria or esophoria and the accommodation parameters like accommodation facility negative and relative accommodation accommodation lag and lead by monocular estimation method uh, all these parameters were studied participants were uh, given treatment one eye right eye as 0.01% atropine as the uh, treatment group and left eye as carboxymethyl cellulose drops which was a placebo in the left eye as control group and these patients were followed up for one year like the, they were also subjected to questionnaire which actually included uh, screen time uh, how much the children were uh, spending time on screen then uh, the number of hours of near activities which included studying drawing tv computer etc then outdoor how much they are uh, spending time with outdoor activities all these uh, were included in the questionnaire even the family history was taken and this questionnaire was filled up at the baseline and an every follow up and the mean was calculated also um, so these were patients were followed up over a year also uh, at every 4 month follow up the cycloplegic refraction as well as axial length uh, was measured and uh, at the end of the one one year uh, what we did is we compared the uh, myopia progression uh, over a period of uh, one year uh, as well as axial length elongation and we also calculated the efficacy of drug which was actual the difference between the myopia progression of the right eye and the left eye the difference this that was the efficacy of the drug in terms of myopia progression and axial length elongation the difference between the two eyes and also their percentage my, uh, percentage myopia progression and percentage uh, correction in the axial length elongation was calculated what were the results that were drawn out of this study so uh, what we found in our study uh, i'll like to discuss the results that will actually implicate what uh, is helpful so uh, myopia progression in our study in the treatment eyes was 0.25 diopter like in treatment eyes like the right eyes progressed around 0.25 diopter per annum in the right eye and the control eyes which was placebo it control it progressed at the rate of 0.69 diopters per annum so there was a difference even there was a difference of axial length elongation which was 0.14 in the right eye and 0.32 in the left eye so there was actually uh, the difference was of 4.5 diopter yet yeah, that means the drug is able to control 0.5 diopter around per year that means you are able to control you are able to decrease the number by half a diopter okay and the if you uh, talk in terms of percentage efficacy of drug the drug was efficacious 66% in terms of myopia progression and 52% in terms of axial length elongation 
and uh, if uh, like uh, we also studied uh, like different modifiable factors uh, and non modifiable factors which has implication on myopia progression as well as the what is these modifiable and non modifiable factors has a role in efficacy of drug so i would like to discuss that uh, what is the results of our study i'll just discuss the results uh, that uh, we have seen that uh, the the strongest determinants of myopia progression and axial length elongation is age and the baseline uh, progression it means that age if the child is younger there will be faster rate of myopia progression mm-hmm. and if the child is older there will be lesser myopia progression so there is inverse relationship between age and myopia progression and uh, again if you talk in terms of baseline myopia progression that means what is the rate at which is progressing so uh, if we know uh, what rate he is progressing we can actually future in future we implicate at what rate he is going to progress and uh, what is the uh, what is the outcome i can achieve out out of uh, any uh, treatment so that will be implicated by if we know uh, age and my, um, baseline myopia progression how does it contribute to the uh, uh, to the rate again uh, if we talk in terms of screen time what we saw that in children without the treatment in eyes without the treatment screen time i mean the more you spend time in, on screen there is greater excellent elongation that means the eyes are growing and at a larger rate if you spend more time on screen now coming to the efficacy of the drug the efficacy of the drug was higher if the child spends more time in outdoor activities like more than 2 hours is uh, like we found in our study and if the child is spending prolonged near activities like more than 3 hours of near work then there is greater chance of myopia progression also if the fast there is a faster myopia progression again the efficacy of the drug will be lower and if there is a history of parental myopia the efficacy of the drug will be lower so overall just to conclude what relevance do you feel does this study have for the general practitioners meaning what is the clinical significance if i talk about it of this particular study so uh, i like to say that uh, 0.01% atropine eye drop is effective and safe in indian population and the efficacy is around 66% and you can uh, roughly think that you can de- you can manage 0.5 diopter per annum of myopia you can control that much of myopia if it is progressing at a very faster rate more than 1 1.5 you can't control that but at least you can control 0.5 diopter per annum without any side effect in indian population first of all i would like to say this and second uh, thing which we got from our study is that we should uh, discourage screen time in children and we should ask the children to take breaks in near activities because exhaustive near activities does decrease the efficacy of the drug and if there is parental myopia one should be more careful because there will be faster uh, the, the efficacy of the drug will be might be lower and uh, if the child indulges in outdoor activity the drug will be more effective in our study we have a, a, a low accommodation facility it simply means that children have lot of accommodation errors while focusing on distance and near i mean they have some amount of accommodation errors which is leading to blur on the retina and this may be the reason of progression so what we found in our study it was interesting finding in our study so uh, one should also check the accommodation parameters and if there are uh, like uh, errors in the accommodation facility or any of the parameters it should be corrected that's all for today stay tuned to medical dialogues for latest updates never miss a medical update from medical dialogues like subscribe and press the bell icon